I'm Luke Delamar, and in today's video, we're gonna learn the basics of using cameras in Unreal Engine. And jumping right into this, I'm working in this free coffee shop environment from some of our other videos. You can find the link in the description for it. I'm gonna click on the plus button at the top here and under cinematic, click on Cine Camera Actor. You'll notice a viewport kind of pops up and if I move my camera, I can actually see my gizmo is over here. I press G so that I can see this thing and I can fly this a little bit closer. And while sometimes it can be convenient to have this automatic viewport if you have the camera selected, right? So when I click it, it shows up. You can also pin it right here. I'm actually gonna turn that off with a setting. So I'll click edit, editor preferences, and I'll search for preview camera. And right here under preview selected cameras, I will uncheck that. And now when I have camera selected, that doesn't show up. To pilot the camera, I can click Control Shift P or at the top of the viewport, click on perspective and then switch this to Cine Camera Actor. And now if I right click and use the WASD keys, I can fly around. You'll notice we've got a more narrow field of view and we can actually tell that there is some depth of field now. We're gonna go through all the important settings, but the first one to know about is the film back. So with that camera actor selected in the details panel, I'll scroll down and under film back, we see sensor width and height. Those correspond to the sensor size of the camera being used. You can go to websites like the VFX camera database here where there's tons of different cameras and you can click on any one of these and you'll see different project or sensor modes from those cameras and the given sensor size or sensor area being used in that mode. You can always Google which camera you want to use and I've got the Alexa Mini LF sensor chart right in front of me here. For today's video, I'm going to use the 4.5K open gate setting here, which is 36.7 by 25.74. So let's do that. Or did I get that right? 0.54. And things are looking right because this is a three by two sensor mode and our viewport now does look three by two. And so before we continue, the reason you might even wanna set your film back in the first place is so that your lensing information is accurate and gives you the correct field of view for the right camera you're using. Now that we've set our film back, when we change the focal length, which is right here at the bottom where it says current focal length, this will accurately reflect that lens on this sensor. Some of the other important settings here might be lens settings where you'll see a minimum and max focal length. You actually don't really need to change those because it's all done down here where it says current for both focal length and aperture. Those are just the max, right? So I could go to four or a thousand. Now it's rare to need to go outside of that range. So I'm not gonna change those settings. And if I change my aperture to a shallower number like 1.2, you'll see the depth of field also gets shallower and more blurry. Under focus settings, the default method is manual, meaning you click and drag or enter a value to change where your focal plane is. You can click on this debug mode right here and you'll get a little visual representation that you can move, it's kind of handy. But this is kind of a slow way to set focus. We wanna automate this with something that automatically tracks our focus as we move the camera. So in order to do that, we're going to add a point in space that we can tell the camera, hey, use this as our focus point. I'll click on the plus and under basic, I'll select actor. And so when you add a basic actor like this to the scene, there's no geometry, there's no light. Outside of the gizmo that's right here, if you press G, you actually don't see anything in the scene, but it is a point in space. So I can click it and drag it and move it a little bit closer to this table. I can go into the outliner, click F2 and rename this to focus. And then back with the cine camera selected, I can go into these focus settings and switch from manual to tracking. And then you get a few other options and there's this actor to track. I can just click that and search for focus, select that. And just like that, this point in space is now being tracked. So if I fly closer to it, our focus is tracking to that point. Now in today's video, I also wanna show how to use an anamorphic camera. That's why I use this sensor mode. And so in order to do that, I'm going to click on my camera again and under lens settings, there is a squeeze factor and the default is one. But if I click and drag this all the way to two, you'll notice we get a canvas that is now twice as wide. As we change this, you'll notice the height isn't growing at all. It's only the width. And so if I change our current focal length to 50, having that squeeze factor at two means that we are getting the width of a 25 mil lens. And this is how anamorphic lenses work in real life. A 50 mil two times squeeze anamorphic will give you that. And so that's what we're seeing in Unreal here in the viewport, it's just already de-squeezed. And so just like with a real camera, this three by two sensor mode has now doubled in width and 
This is a little bit wider than a traditional widescreen ratio like 235 or 240. And so let's add a letterbox so we can visualize that. I'll click on the Cine Camera Actor at the top. And if I scroll down, there's Viewport Type. I'll switch this to Cinematic. And when you do that, it might jump you out of the camera. You can always just hit G, click on your camera, Control Shift P to jump back in. And what changed in the viewport with this setting is we now have a little button here that shows different types of overlays. I can click on this letterbox mask, click here and type 240. I can click right below that number, give this a color, change the opacity, and I could add a crosshair and change the color of that as well. And now we see 240 represented within that sensor size. All right, so we're gonna skip some of these other settings here, like look at and overscan. Those are more used for gaming and animation and also visual effects. The crop settings here are another way to change uh, your aspect ratio. It'll do exactly that. It'll crop your sensor. So I could just click custom and type 2.4. And you'll notice we've now cropped into that exact 2.4 guide we had set. I'm just gonna leave this on no crop for now. And next up, I'd like to add a character so we can actually do something with this camera. If I go to the top and click on the plus button and then switch over to fab, you can search for these free scanned 3D people pack. Eventually we'll be using MetaHumans, but for today, this is just a little bit quicker. And so you can just click add to project right there. I've already got these in my project, so I'll just go to my content drawer. And with that folder selected, I can just click on a static mesh filter here to show me just the static meshes. And I'm gonna add this first one, Dennis, into my scene. I'll click the eject button to jump out of my camera for a second. And in fact, I can go back to the default viewport as well. Let's just place him so he is seated in this chair. And for the sake of today's video, I'm gonna click on this light right above him and press H to hide that. And same with this lamp. And then the focus actor that we had set, if I click on that, I'd like to find a way to parent that to this character, meaning that it goes with him wherever I move him. And in Unreal, the simplest way to do that is to click on this focus actor and drag him over this Dennis static mesh actor. And just like that, the focus is now parented to this mesh. So if I click on Dennis and move him, that focus stays with him. And so let's set this focus point. Another quick tip is if you're tired of seeing this little icon that shows up whenever you select it, you can change that with this editor billboard scale. So I'll switch that from one to zero. And now we just see the gizmo. Let's jump back into our cine camera. You know, maybe I will jump back into these crop settings and switch this back to custom and 2.4. And now if I fly the camera, we've got a nice viewfinder. Now we're not gonna go over rendering today because we haven't really animated anything and we haven't gone over sequences, but I would like to show you how to take screenshots. The quickest way to do that is with something called a console command. So in Unreal Engine, there's this dialog down at the bottom where it says enter console command. If you press the tilde key on your keyboard or just click down here, you'll type high res, just like this. I'll click the down arrow and you'll see it just populates that with high res shot and I'll hit space, and afterwards you just need to enter a resolution. So this is a 240 image, so I'll do 1920 by 800 like that, and hit enter, and then a little pop-up shows up. I can click this, and just like that, I've saved a screenshot. So we've gone over some of the basic settings. Before calling it on this video, I did wanna show a few more fun settings to play with. Since this is an anamorphic lens we're emulating, let's try and emulate the anamorphic character of one of these lenses. You'll notice that when we change the lens squeeze factor, the bokeh did stretch as it should, but I wanna add on top of that. Starting in Unreal 5.6, there is a setting called Petzval bokeh, which essentially gives you a cat eye bokeh or this circular pattern around your bokeh. And with the Cine Camera Actor selected, I can scroll down in the Details panel until I see Post Process, Lens, and then Depth of Field. And there's two settings we'll click, the Pets Full Bokeh and the Pets Full Bokeh Fall Off. I'll just change this from zero to one, and you'll see immediately what happens. You can, of course, go a little overkill with this. I'll leave this at one for now. And the Fall Off just controls where that starts happening. And I think the default value works for me right now. And so just like that, now we've got a little bit more of an interesting lens character. But last up is distortion. So by default, we have a perfect perspective lens, meaning there's zero lens distortion, which does not exist in real life. And normally this is something you would add after the fact, it's not worth baking into your images and things like that. But let's just say I'm doing some quick tech viz images and I want them to have a little more of that anamorphic character. Well, there's more console commands we can use to do that. And bear with me here, but it's called Panini projection. And you can Google what that is, but in short, there are three different values we're going to add. And what I'll do here is kind of line the camera up with a nice horizontal straight line. And in the console command dialog down at the bottom, I will search for Panini, hit my down arrow so that I select this first one with the D. 
and I will set this to one. And you'll notice we got a little bit of a lens bulge in the center here. And if I go left and right, you can just barely see what's happening, but we're still not distorting the sides. We've kind of just grown the center of our frame. And so that's what the second setting is for, which is the S setting. And I'll set this to negative one. And so you can try this with all these different values, but the D setting goes from zero positive and the S setting goes from zero negative. So I'll do negative one. And just like that, now you see some squeeze happening on the left and right of my frame. And if I fly the camera, now I'm starting to get that character that we see all the time with anamorphic lenses. Now this is a little bit drastic, but I'll leave it for now. If I pan around though, you'll notice we've gone outside the border of what our camera sees with this stretching. And so that's what the third setting is for, which is the Panini screen fit. And so I'll change this to something like 2.5, which will essentially just punch into our image. And now we don't get that same effect. And two other settings you can play with are aberration, where there's this intensity here. I can change this to something like 0.25, and you'll see the edges of the frame get a little bit of a fringe. I can go overkill with this here. And you don't really need to do this in Unreal, but there's a film grain setting, which I can change to something like 0.35. And you might not see it on YouTube here, but there's kind of an animated grain now. I can hit F11 on my keyboard to go full frame, and now I've got a nice viewfinder and I can start to pre-viz or tech-viz or, or just explore. All right, that's it for this video covering just the basics. In the future, we'll definitely go over using sequencers so that we can animate cameras and make sure to stay tuned for more lighting and environment stuff as well. Thanks and until next time.